When we convert the model of a dynamic system to the modal canonical state variable form, we get a model with a number of simple decoupled modes. This allows us to understand the possibly complex behavior of the full system as the combination of the simpler behaviors of the modes of the system. In this video, we revisit the two mass example of a previous video and convert it to the modal form using eigenvalues and eigenvectors. We then simulate and visualize the behavior of the system, but we excite only one mode at a time. Let's first recap the model derived previously. The system consists of two objects, a blue object with mass m1 and displacement from the equilibrium z1 and a red object with mass m2 and displacement z2. The objects experience viscous friction with coefficients b1 and b2 respectively. There is a spring between the objects with spring constant k2 and a spring between the blue object and a movable connection with spring constant k1. The displacement of this connection is also the input to the system. The measured output is the displacement of the red object. We chose the states to be the displacement and velocity of the blue object as well as the displacement and velocity of the red object. This led to the fourth order state equation as shown here and the output equation as shown here. The block diagram is shown over here. The blue part of the block diagram models the dynamics of the blue object and the red part models the red object. We can see that the states are interconnected, so the behavior of one object influences the behavior of the other object. For a set of arbitrary parameters, we then simulated the step response of this system. A visualization of the system is shown at the top, the input is shown below that, the displacements of the two objects shown next, and the velocity of the objects at the bottom. Although this is only a fourth order system, the response looks complex and it is not immediately clear how to understand the response. Let's now convert the system to the modal canonical form and excite only one mode at a time. In practice, you would not convert a state variable system by hand as we have done in the previous videos. You would rather use numerical software to do this. For example, in MATLAB you could use the canon command with the argument modal to convert a linear time invariant system to a modal canonical state variable system. The transformation matrix P that would transform the states of the modal form back to the original system description with this transformation is also returned by the canon function. After we transform the model to the modal form, we get these state variable equations where x bar are the states in modal form. When we look at the A matrix, we see that it is in block diagonal form as expected. It contains two 2x2 two two blocks, which means that there are two modes. When we look at the first mode, we recognize it as a complex pole pair with the real component of minus 0.161 and an imaginary component of plus minus 3.45. This corresponds to a stable but lightly damped complex pole pair and the natural response of this mode is therefore an exponentially decaying sinusoidal signal with a frequency of 3.45 radians per second or a period of 1.8 seconds. The second mode is also a complex pole pair with the real component of minus 0.177 and an imaginary component of plus minus 1.51. It also corresponds to a stable, lightly damped pole pair but the exponentially decaying sinusoidal signal has a lower frequency, 1.51 radians per second, or a period of just over 4 seconds. The block diagram for the modal form is shown here. The first mode is indicated in blue and the second mode in orange. We can clearly see that the states of the first mode have no connections and therefore no influence on the states of the second mode and vice versa. For the first simulation, we keep the input 0 and we set the initial value of the state x1 bar to 5 and the initial values of the rest of the states to 0. 
Since the input and initial values of the states of the second mode are all zero, its states will continue to be zero and its contribution to the output will be zero. We therefore expect the system to exhibit the natural response of the first mode, which is an exponentially decaying sinusoidal signal with a period of 1.8 seconds. We call this process of setting the initial conditions exciting the first mode. However, the initial conditions are set for the states in the modal form, x bar. To find the initial conditions in terms of the original state definition, we simply use this transformation, multiplying the transformation matrix P with the initial modal states to get the initial original states. The initial original state vector turns out to be this. So we set the displacement and velocity of the blue object to this and this, and the displacement and velocity of the red object to this and this. Let's now run the simulation. The behavior is exactly what we expect. The natural response of a second or a lightly damped system with a period of 1.8 seconds. Although it is exactly what we expect, it is always a bit magical to see. Let's now excite the second mode. We set the initial value of the state x bar 3 to 4 and the rest of the states to 0. We now expect the behavior of the system to be completely determined by the natural response of the second mode. To find the initial conditions in terms of the original states, we again use this transformation which gives us this initial original state vector. Let's now run the simulation again. The system behavior is again exactly what we expect. The natural response of a second or a lightly damped system with a period of just over 4 seconds. If we want to name the modes, I would call the first mode the differential mode, since the objects move in opposite directions, and I would call the second mode the common mode, since the objects move in the same directions. If we look back at what we have seen in this video, we can now understand the complex fourth order behavior of the system as the superposition of two lightly damped second order modes, with the frequency of the natural response of one mode being a bit more than double that of the other mode.